Maximize the time. Thank you, Father. I'd like to speak this morning on the subject of what is next. What is next? And I will explain a little bit what I mean by what is next. What is next? Everybody say with me, what's next? what's next? Okay, tell your neighbor, what next? Don't say, what's up? Say, what's next? <laughs> I didn't say, what is up? I say, what is next? All right? Tell your neighbor again, what's next? Okay, I will make it more personal. Tell your neighbor, what's next for you? Or put it this way, what is your next? Don't think about your ex. I'm talking about your next. <laughs> what is your next? Don't think about your ex. What is your next? What's next? On the leadership gathering, uh, last Saturday, I introduced a little bit this a little bit quickly talking about what's next. And I would like to dig into it a little bit this morning. Starting with part one of the Jacob's prophetic flow. Jacob prophetic flow. We're going to swim in a new stream. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Read with me Genesis 25, verse 22 to 23. And then we're going to go 39, 34. Here is the reading of the word. Here is what next. So whenever we're going to read the word, you stand up on your feet. That's the what next. Everybody stand up on your feet to honor the word. Thank you, Father. If you can, it's okay. But if you can, then stand up on your feet. We just want to honor the word because the word is Jesus Christ. But the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, am I like this? Why am I like this? If all is well... Why am I like this? That's another subject there. If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people among the two that are in your womb shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. That's why you feel the way you feel, even though you are well. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. That's what happened when you come out of the field. You always get tired. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with the same red stew. Because his hairs were red, he liked what is red to accommodate its skin color. For I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, here is the businessman coming on the stage. He gave nothing for free. Sell me your birthright as of this day. Now, he's not talking to a stranger to his own blood brother. He's trying to sell him something just for a cup of meat. And he saw said, look, I'm about to die. Now, when you come from the field and you're tired, you exaggerate everything. He's just tired, but he says, I'm dying. So he's going to pay for something that is equivalent to death. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. Now, this boy, when he used the word swear, he's signing a covenant. This is the contract we are signing here. This is the business deal. And it's official. It is legal. Swear to me on this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Wow, he just asked for the stew. He had lentils and bread. That's amazing. That's a good deal. Then he ate and drank and he rose and went his way. That's what happened. You come from the field, you drink, you, you, and you rose and go on your way. That on your way can be taught because we don't know where he went. That Esau despised his birth right. Hallelujah. But he despised his birth right. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. We saw in this text that God said, 
The reason, if you are feeling well, why are you feeling this way? Is because there's two nations struggling in your stomach, and there are two types of people who are fighting in. I want to use this message to speak to each individual today, first, and number two, to each family, and number three, to any business-minded or any business owners or somebody who's dreaming business, and number four, to the church as a body, and to anyone who will hear this message outside of these corners, let them take it and let it pull them up to the next level. Life is not eternal on the earth. It's eternal after life. In other words, in this life, you have a limited amount of time that have been allocated to you in days and months, minutes and seconds, and so on. And so, we are on this platform that's called earth to do business. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. I go away, do business with what I've entrusted to you. Every one of you here is a business person, even though you have not incorporated yet your business. Life in itself is a business. We are on a marketplace, you want to or not. That's just the way it goes. When you wake up every morning, you are walking out to go do business. Regardless if it is to go to work for somebody or for yourself or go look for a job, you are in a business platform. And therefore, you need to learn skills and wisdom so you can acquire, increase. Because any business that does not acquire, increase is not doing well. So if your life is a business, you have to acquire, increase in the different areas around your life. If not, you're not doing well. Sometimes people will say, you are a salesperson. Of course, everyone is a salesperson. You are selling something today. Even to have your job, you have to sell your skills and convince the HR management to hire you. Life is business. Get back there. What next for you? Two nations, two people. In other words, what we're going to learn today, in this church and those who are watching, you are either an Esau type or you are a Jacob type, nothing in between. I pray we will be able to allocate ourselves where we are. Because if you don't know where you are, you can change. You will keep navigating in the same waters, getting dirty the same way, getting messy the same way. You can have all the skill of swimming, but as long as you don't change streams, your skill of swimming will not be profitable. You see the word profitable is business word, profitable, profit. I pray at the end of this message we will change streams. Some of us will change streams. I was driving yesterday coming from the hospital and I realized, my God, if I had changed streams a few years ago, it would have been a different story for me and my family. But it's not too late to change streams. Hallelujah. So I change streams and I keep changing them. <laughs> I want to be a Jacob anointed man. Thank you, Jesus. So, Jacob versus Esau. Jacob streams, Esau stream. If you don't like the word stream, call it platform or system. Apply it to every area of your jurisdiction, including the church, your ministry, the body, your business, and your family, and so on. By the word we just read, the platform or the stream of Jacob surpasses the one of Esau. Because he said, one will be stronger than the other. One, the older will serve the youngest. In other words, Jacob's stream is more powerful and it has more authority. Esau's stream is weak. Somebody says strength. Strength. When we talk about strength, don't think about muscle strength.
When I was in the hospital with my son, and I was so overwhelmed, and I heard a voice that spoke to me. And it says like this. Today, don't try to diminish the weight of the struggle. I wrote it down in the line of my sermon. And I will explain to you. There's many people on the earth who are faced with difficulties, tasks, assignments, vision, dreams, projects to fulfill. And you hear sometimes, this is an impossible task. It's too hard. It's too difficult. And then we try to remove some weight so it becomes light to carry or to fulfill. God said, today, don't try to remove weight from the weight of the task. On the contrary, engage to grow in strength. You catch me? So instead of you trying to make some conversation with the assignment and the vision and the dream and the project God gave you and trying to shrink it down to lose some pounds so it can become lighter for you to fulfill it, that is a wrong bargain. You should be now looking to see what I can receive from God to give me strength greater than the weight that I'm called to carry. So if my vision is this big and I'm not able to lift it up, don't go to this one to make it your vision because you can lift it up. You catch me? So many people have projects of this side and then they pull their can, they pull their can, they can. Finally, they try to diminish the weight to match their present strength so that they can come and look good and take it with one finger. And say, praise the Lord, I fulfill it. No, God said don't lie by diminishing the weight of the vision and the dream and the purpose I've set before you. On the contrary, grow strength so you can take care of this and lift it up. That's what God wants you to do. So when the vision does not shrink to match your present strength, you need to grow strength so you can fulfill it. That's what when the Bible says Jacob is stronger, that's what it means. It means no matter the task, the assignment and the project and the task that has been given to him, it does not match. He will build strong strength and carry it out. Look at today. How many people in the church are settling for less? Because what I've been entrusted to them, they feel like it's too difficult. It's too hard for me. So they look for an easy way to look good. But yet, they are failing when it's come to purpose. Today, from this message, we're going to learn to grow strength. Amen. So whatever you face, you won't run away from it. You will not wait it and abandon and look for something smaller. You will grow strength. And you will take it on. You will take it on. There are some people here, don't give up on what God has said before you. You need to take it on. Say, somebody, I'm going to take on this. Say, it, I'm going to take on this. I am able to take on this. I will not loosen up. I'm going to take it on. Yeah, you can wait it up and take it up. It's grow strength. That's what we say. Jacob's system is stronger. Jacob's system run before nothing. There are people like that that I know. You can give them this most intimidated task. And they won't run away from it. They lack a challenge. They will go and grow strength, finding knowledge, finding skills, talking to the right people. They don't run away. They grow strength and they carry out the task with amazing manners. But there are other people, every task that is outside of the confine of their strength, they feel like, uh-uh, you find the wrong guy. This is too difficult. I can't do it. Like your mathematics teacher <laughs> in, the, in the old days or your physics teacher. No, no, no. This, this question, there's no solution for it. Because I can solve it. There's something wrong here with, with the question. Question number five, there's something wrong with it. Because you apply all your knowledge and all your answers and you couldn't solve it, you say something is wrong with the question. There's nothing wrong with what God said before you, my friend. 
You being able to do does not make it right. So if you see the question is becoming like an impossible question and you seem like something is wrong with the question, go and grow muscle. Go and grow, grow strength in your mathematics or your physics. We will solve every question God brings to us by growing strength. Amen? As I said, the joke of prophetic flow surpasses souls in strength, authority, productivity, and relevancy. You see, when they tell someone being relevant, people think this is a new age term. Relevancy is a Bible term. It's a God term. When we talk about relevancy, we talk about seasons in time. We talk about the capacity you have to change, to adapt, to redefine yourself so you can meet the need of your generation. That's being a relevant system, a relevant church, a relevant business, a relevant family, a relevant individual. You have to have the capacity to change, to revolve, to redefine. Some people who live in the ESO system don't like change. They think change means failure. Because ESO is an old system that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every technology is using iPhone. ESO still have his old dialing thing of the old days. Although, oh, it doesn't work. But you need new technology. No. My grandfather was using this phone. My dad was using the same phone. I won't betray our tradition. I need to stay in the same culture. I'm going to use the same big phone. That's the ESO system. They don't like to be challenged for change. They like to keep the same old thing over and over again. 100 years, they still dread the same way. 100 years, they still talk the same way. 100 years, they're still hanging around with the same chicken. 100 years later, they're still using the same phone. 100 years, they're still complaining the same complaint. 100 years, they still war on me. That's an Esau system. It does not like to change. But a Jacob system is relevant. It embraces change. It revolves. It redefines itself. It adds values to itself so it can meet the need of his generation. Marakotaya. The, old, the Catholic church, that is the universal church, have to learn that lesson, at least in Africa. At one time, they play only organ. Dun, 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 dun. Very powerful, very powerful, very powerful. Then the churches begin to empty. In some of the churches, the average age is 65, 70 years old. No young person will go there and, and then you make no noise. Nothing is wrong with what they do. It is just they have lost relevancy. They have refused to change with time and seasons. That is the most flourishing ground for religious spirit. Religious spirit does the same thing forever. It refuses to change, thinking that they will disappoint God or they will break the laws of God, and if they change, God will get out of it. God will never settle in the system of a man. We need to be flexible. Jesus was so relevant that he didn't call a woman apostle in his time. All the apostles were men. It's not because a woman cannot be an apostle or a prophet, prophetess. It's because Jesus was relevant. So he functioned based on the season and the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I mean, can you imagine if we have to keep playing the same song we used to play on Center Street? The river flow. Dun, 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 dun. Evangelist Glory. The river flow. Dun, 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 dun. That will be lack of relevancy. But even if we begin to sing the river flow today, it has to be of a different tone. The river flow. The river flow. <laughs> Don't recruit me on the worship team. Oh. <laughs> But it could not be the same. It had to change. 
Hallelujah. There are some Christians, when we preach the word, they are so Esau system that they think this word is not for them, it's for the neighbor. Because they don't want to change. The word of God commands change. It is imperative that change is a way of life for every Christian. Because we have not arrived yet. Today after year, you need to change. The word of God wants you to change your values. To change the way you think. To change the way you navigate your life. To change the way you relate to others. To change the way you do business. To change the way you do ministry. To change. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Vision may not change, but vision demands change. Your vision may be the same, but it demands change. There are businesses, I was in one of them, Harris Wireless Access. I worked for them for a few years. They lost the turn. Telecommunication system. I was privileged to sell Kenya, their first telecommunication digital system to the government. But we were stuck in the analog for too long and we missed the curve. All our competitor was digitalizing. We were still analoging. Before you know it, bam, the company shut down. The same thing happened to Nortel. Some of you know these companies. They're bankrupt, not because they didn't have good workers, because they swim in the same stream for too long, and they refuse to change to another stream. Do you understand that? We have to change. It's a demand for relevancy so we can serve better our generation. We can't do business as usual. You heard that before. Hallelujah. And therefore, every system that refuses to change will miss the opportunities of the future. Changing means you need to recalibrate certain, certain things. You need to realign certain things. You need even to throw out certain things. Close your eyes. I know you are the one who has created this system. And you are so acquainted with it. It looks like so wonderful. That's your baby. All right? But time comes, you have to throw this thing out. Because it cannot take us where we are going. It has taken us to here. Bravo. Good job, Scotties. <laughs> I just read the name on the box. I'm not prophesying. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Change are necessary if you want to stay on the top. As a preacher, I educate myself. I learn from other people. I look at other stream, how they stream their stuff. So I can remain relevant and not be forgotten in the backyard there, still doing the same old thing 25 years ago that does not produce anymore. It is just an emotional satisfaction. It's our thing. It's our thing. It's the way we do things here. This is our thing. There's nothing that's your thing. It's killing you. Let it, let it go. Can I go further? Esau likes to go hunt. And he chases after one antelope at a time. And when he sees it, he kills it. So he can eat to satisfy his stomach. For one, two, three days, the most... And here it goes again. Is you gotta go out again, chasing again, sweating, working hard. If you're one of these person, they always tell you, "Man, you're such a hard worker." I, don't tell me that, please. Don't tell me. I don't want that. I don't want people to tell me I'm a hard worker. That means I'm sweating too much, always hunting after an antelope. That's not my portion. If you give an antelope to Esau, he see stew. He saw sees too. He had to do some soup, pepper soup, mix up really nice with some pounded yam. He saw is having a good time today. Or with some bread and something. But if you give an angel up to Jacob, <laughs> Jacob will look at the angel and say, ah, don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. I'd rather remain hungry today 
by securing better tomorrows. So I'm going to use this antelope and breed it and produce so many little antelope. From now on, everybody will not go hunt anymore. I will provide for them to take them away from sweating. So anytime I need, I don't go in the bush. I just go behind the backyard and pick up my little antelope and have a feast. What are you doing? Are you hunting to kill or you are hunting to breed? Tell me. Are you hunting to kill? Don't say it loud, all right? Are you hunting to kill? Number one, are you living day by day? That's what it means. I get paid today $1,000. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. For three days, we will have food. And God will take care of the rest after. That's the ease of thinking. We work to live, not to secure the future. Everything we get, it goes... And then I praise the Lord, I'm going to go work again. I'm going to go hunt again and, and kill another antelope. And I cut few and again. Okay, we're going back tomorrow again to hunt again. That's an Esau thinking pattern. It's a stream that is a dangerous stream because it is void of thinking about future. It doesn't see generation, it sees itself. You just work to eat. You sweat to eat. You hunt to eat. You labor to eat. One day after the other. How will you leave a legacy to your children? Children, 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 children. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. So if you want, you can catch up some of the stuff I'm preaching to myself. A ease of thinking pattern has invaded the life of Christian. Because we say we live by faith. We live by faith. You know what? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Just live by faith. Just live by faith. You just live to... Faith couples with wisdom is powerful. But faith void of wisdom is dangerous. I refuse to continue to swim, to swim in that stream of Esau. I refuse it. Somebody say, I refuse. Say it again, I refuse. I refuse it so bad, even my swimming trunk that I had swimming in that river, I will remove and put a new one. Yes. So it does not bring the old water in the new one. Yes. I want to challenge you to change the way you live. Yes. Ah. Don't run away from change. Don't be a Christian who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Only God is entitled to such. Yes. Only God is entitled to such. For you and I, we should not be the same yesterday, today, and forever. We should be transformed from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh. The issue is not how heavy the load is. The issue is how strong are you? When life throws you curveballs that you didn't pray for, you didn't ask for, and tragedy happened, and thing hit at a moment, you are not even ready to receive a pound, 10,000 pounds fall on your back. It's not about the weight of the problem. It's how strong are you? Isaiah 37 verse 3 said, When the time to give birth came, they had no strength to push the baby out. This is what Ezekiah said. This day is the day of distress and rebuke and disgrace. And when the children come to the moment of birth, and there is no strength to deliver. God want to bring forth the vision he has promised you to birth. But you have no strength to push it out. And he won't reduce the size of the baby. You need to grow in strength. Now they have become very, 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 very smart when it comes to my strength. Whatever I will connect with will take my strength out, I, I cut it off. I need my strength. 
I have too much weight to carry. Too much. So many weight and so much weight, I can't afford to waste my strength. I need my strength. Because I, have the, I know the size of what I carry. Amen. I cannot afford to, to spill out my strength left and right. Because when the time comes to push forth the baby, I got to have the strength required to deliver. Amen. Hey, Jesus. Don't let anything take away your strength. When we speak about strength, we talk about joy. The strength, the joy of the Lord is my strength. There is too much stuff happening in the earth that try to take your joy away. Relationship that steal your joy. Your boss that steal your joy. Your children stealing your joy. Your wife of your husband. Something want to take it away. You need to refuse to lose your joy because it's the place of strength. Don't wait for a moment and run away from the weight of life. Life will bring weight. Yes. It will play a tune and you have to learn to dance according to its rhythm. Jacob prophetic flow. This is our portion. The Bible says Esau was a skillful hunter. Listen to me. He was skillful. He was an expert. I want to challenge you. Become skillful in what is given to you. In other words, sharpen your God-given gifts. Sharpen them. Because you will gain only mastery in the areas where you put your priority, where you embrace, where you put your time, that's where you will gain mastery. The places that engage your priority, only there you will gain mastery. If not, you will remain a customer instead of being a supplier. Thank you, Jesus. Here's another problem with the Esau system. Please hear me. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not preaching to you. You know, in the Esau system, people gain excitement and passion. They are thrilled to hunt. Right? Even if they don't catch. They're like new projects. New vision. They're excited. They have a thrill just to be able to engage in something. And they, have, they will run, they don't catch. What is the new thing? They run, they don't catch. What do they? Don't be thrilled just to hunt. Be thrilled because you catch. Don't get adrenaline popping up and you feel so hopeful and you feel so excited because there's a new thing God just spoke to your life. Because there's a new project. There's a new business idea, and you get excited. You are pumping up. You don't sleep anymore. You are thrilled and joyful, but you never fulfill anything. And then you, you fail. You are just excited chasing. You are not excited catching because you get your adrenaline by chasing, not catching. That is so. And therefore, you go from project to project. The first project, what did you catch? The second one, what do you leave it alone? I want a new one because I'm feeling bored right now. Something is wrong with this church now. Something is wrong with our marriage. Something is wrong with our life. I need something new. I need my husband give us a vision here. We need to pursue something. You are not born to pursue. You are born to catch. That man was weak. Let me try here. I say you are not born to just pursue. You are born to catch. From project to project, catching nothing. And yet you are fire. Speaking the strongest tongue ever. Thank you, Lord. This one, baby, we are coming out of debt. Don't worry. This one, it will take us out of debt. This one, that will be an explosion. 
customer will run like that. I can feel God revealed to me. Oh, we need to make this money. Money is coming. Money is coming. The poor woman is excited. Oh, at last we're going to have a breakthrough. Three months later, you know what? There's a new project here. Somebody. <laughs> I'm not talking about you, okay? The guy who are not at church, those are the guy I'm talking about. Come on, talk to me. Are you never been there? I have been there so many times. Ah! Thank you, Julius, for being truthful. We just jump and chase things. And after we feel the anointing is uplifted, I need a new one. I need a new thing. There's a new idea. Wow, 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 wow. This one. It is the one. This one become a millionaire. This one become the... What about the one that you were excited we didn't sleep anymore, so much fire in the house? Don't be like you saw, enjoying just chasing, but no reward at the end. His reward is chasing. His reward is enjoying the mean, not the end to the mean. Jesus. January, the plans of the year. I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. Let's put that in prayer. Hallelujah. Do, 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 do. And then by February, which you change the plan. You know what? There's a new idea that just came out. That is powerful. Don't tell anybody. This is new in Calgary. <laughs> All right, okay. I will stop being silly. <laughs> Don't just get excited by activities. Don't just get excited by activities. Hallelujah. Activity does not equate productivity. It's different. We need to be excited by productivity, not activity. I want to challenge everyone today. Whatever you're going to engage in, have your eyes on the reward. Not on just the thrill of a good idea and the potential that it's going to do for you. As my wife said, who cares about potential if it does not become potency? Everybody has potential. Let me potential alone. Nobody gets rewarded because they have potential. You get rewarded because your potential has been actualized. Too much talking. Hallelujah. It does was in uh, Nigerian. Ashon? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here is the main future of our Jacob stream. It gathers and it rather suffer today to secure the opportunities of tomorrow. That's the way Jacob functions. He rather get hungry today than trying to be somebody today and jeopardize a greater platform that awaits him just a few years ahead. You are not wasting your time if you are in the stream of Jacob. You can suffer for a little bit. You can even go in lack for a little bit. But doesn't mean you are defeated. It's because you are a view of the future and for generation to come. So you can endure a little bit. Thank you, Lord. I said two days ago, I said, Lord, if there is any gift in me that has not been revealed yet, don't wait. It's now. So I can bargain better with life. I'm a salesperson by trade, so I see everything in a selling way, all right? I, I, because my gifts are my assets. And I want to be a master in my gifts. Not in somebody else's gift, mine. So if there is any gift, I'm 51 years old. If there is any gift dormant here, Lord, please, it's now. Because... It seems like life is throwing bigger stuff on our way. Yes, yes. And now the liabilities are increasing. 
I need also to nourish my assets, multiply them, and gain strength from my assets so I can manifest All the bankers are saying, yeah, that is true. What about you? What is it that life is throwing at you? What are the challenges you are facing? What are the assignments, God-given assignments, that are freaking you out right now? Intimidating you. Making you bow your head. You are even afraid to take a proper assessment of some of these assignments. Because you think you're so little when you stand before it. You think you're losing the battle that I've not even yet begun. You feel so small. You can't equate to the demand. can match to it. Sometimes we want to withdraw. Or we want to engage in smaller battles and smaller assignments. And we downplay our visions. We shrink it down. We by saying that we are polishing it. We are not polishing it. We are just shrinking it down so it can match our little strength so we don't have to command change and transformation and go through a process of revolving. Stop polishing your vision. Take it raw. No matter how strong or how big it is, don't shrink it down. Ask God to awaken your assets. Yes. Oh! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me run through this thing. Watch this. The poor Esau huh? is the oldest. He sold his birthright. When the time come to receive the birthright, the father said, Esau, my son, I love your hunting. Go game. Bring me one of those wildest antelope we have never tasted in this house. Esau he said, oh, at last year the time has come for my benediction and my blessing to be released. Hallelujah. And then he took his weapons. It was not new to him. This was routine. The guy was a skillful hunter because he has hunted so much, you couldn't match him. He was a master in his area because it was the source of his stomach. That, that's the place that his stomach eat. So he went out where? In the wilderness. To do what? To hunt. Hunting out. Sweating. Some people here, God want to give you rest. So you stop sweating and working so hard. <laughs> okay, here we go hunting. This is what I've done all my life. Esau's life is predictable. When the crosses hit, because he has all his eggs in one basket, is over. He can only hunt. I want to command you, diversify. Okay, I will make it in terms that you don't need to be a businessman to understand that. Add values to your life Amen. in different areas. Amen. Is that okay? Yes. Because here is the problem with Esau. Esau think the bush and the forest will always provide an antelope. Esau think seasons and time are the same. But a Jacob anointed stream understand that this thing is feeding me today but it can stop any time like the brook of Elijah. Are you catching me, somebody? You see the brook of Elijah, it dry up? Yes. If it was Esau, he would think this brook will never dry up. So you live your life thinking you'll always have that job. No, no, no. You live your life as if this business will always work well. You think 
time and season does not affect. It's not true. Jacob understand. I may be eating today from this hand, but one day or another, this hand could dry up. So the poor guy always go hunting, looking for his antelope, and then he catch one. Oh, praise the Lord. And people think he's lived by faith. Listen to me. Jacob asked for seed to God. And once he asked for seed to God, he will produce a forest. You give a forest to Esau, it will turn into a desert because he killed to eat. You getting me? Are you catching me? Say, I hear you. I hear you. Hear me, God is our provider. But he has given us wisdom to increase what he gives us. He said, do business until I come. So when he came back, one guy did not bring any increase. And God called him, you a wicked servant. To one who brought increase. He exercised his gifts. He manifested his strength. And he took what was two and make it four. The other one flexed his muscles. He exercised the gift God gave him. He increased his strength and his liabilities and his uh, uh, assets. And he multiplied. But the other guy, he was Esau. He gave me one, I will just kill it. He buried it. You bury only what you kill. God said, where's the increase? He said, but I was an issue and I didn't know about it. Last point and we pray. When the man Esau went in the bush to hunt, the man Jacob stayed home. <laughs> this is so amazing how God works with people in life. Don't think for a second that Jacob was such a crooked man. In fact, I look in the Bible, I've never seen a place where Jesus, where the Bible said Jacob was crooked. His name means crooked. But it's not what your name means that matters. It's what you're able to produce. Amen. The strength you are able to grow. Ah! It never what does not matter where you are born from. Who was your mother, your father? Who you walk with? Who betrayed you? Who brought you forth in this earth? No matter how crazy they were, it may be your name meaning crooked, cheater, poor, lazy. But at the end of the day, on the marketplace of life, you can do business and trade and increase your assets and increase your strengths. You may be called a cheater, but God testify and say he was a righteous man. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh! Your family line matters not anymore. Hallelujah. You can change stream today. Amen. You can decide what will lead you, what will quicken you, what will guard you, what will inspire you, what will make you run or not. Amen. You make a choice today. The word of God said in Malachi that God loved Jacob and he hated Esau. He called Esau a profane man. The stream of Esau is despised by God. What are we going to do with your life now? Keep going in the same routine. You're going to keep doing the thing that you always done that doesn't produce much? Because you don't want to disappoint your own effort and sacrifice it that you have already released in it? It's better to lose all the strength you put in by investing into change for the future. Watch this. Jacob breed 
antelopes. Whenever you give him a seed, he doesn't eat the seed. He multiplies the seed. I say he doesn't eat the seed. Even though he's hungry. He will go on a hunger strike. Because his mind is so filled with the vision of the future. His mind is so filled with generations. That he rather starve today. But Esau, blinded, selfish man, I eat now. We'll see what tomorrow will do. <coughs> Esau is weak. Jacob is strong. Esau served Jacob. Who are you serving? When we look at our lives sometimes, we're just like a bunch of servants again. At the mercy of somebody to be signing a check for me. There is honor in working for somebody. But with a Jacob mentality, I will sacrifice to work for you for these years. But I'm planning to see how can I manage to not go in the wilderness hunting all the time, waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning and entering with overtime shift and having three jobs. In 2019, slavery is imposed on no one. It's a choice. They are in this of masters and servants. Yeah, but I'm afraid. Esau does not like change. He is afraid to engage in change because change demands change. You cannot change your environment if you haven't changed. The reason Esau does not want to change his environment is because he doesn't like to change. Your vision will change you. It will change the way you walk. It will change the way you talk. It will change the way you associate with others. And talk about association. Here is my closing. Now the man is there hunting. Jacob now is on his own. And mama comes to Jacob and says, hey boy, the time has come. Oh, this is not fair. Hear me, life is not fair. Do you hear what I say? You don't get in life what you think you deserve. You don't. Your core values have a lot to do with it. Your pursuit has a lot to do with it. Wisdom has everything to do with it. So the boy just grabbed now. Listen, imagine he's going five kilometers on his feet. Hoping to catch, the forest will be graceful. The forest will be kind today to release one antelope. He's relying on the forest. <laughs> and yet the guy who has breed the antelope at home, Jacob, he just swim in his stream back behind the house, take his time to choose the best that he has groomed. Pick it up. Here it is. Even though he groomed the antelope, he have not learned yet to cook. Esau is a one-man hunter, but he's a master cooker. He can cook. Jacob has not learned yet to cook. In other words, there is another change that Jacob is confronting even in his stream. You know what he did? He said, but I'm going in partnership. Mama, you know how to cook this thing. You are on my team. What I can do, you can do. D did you guess what I'm saying? Yes. Who's on your team? <laughs> do you have on your team a cook, so-called cook? Theory cookers? They know all the condiments, but they never put anything in the pot. They are th There's too many theory talkers nowadays. When you talk to them, say, wow, when do we send the check? You're amazing me. It's all in their mouth. Today, look for fruit. Yes. I told you on Wednesday, if you want to pay out your house quickly, don't talk to me. 
Man was paid out by the grace of God, not by skills. But there are individuals here who have their house paid off. So don't go ask the wrong people who are still accumulating with this thing to the hub that is called mortgage. Meaning, if you need wisdom, ask to whom wisdom has been granted and it's visible. He didn't go ask to the neighbor there on the other side. He said, Mama, right here, you're on my team. I don't need to learn how to cook. In the Jacob stream, you don't need to be an expert in everything. You just need to be wise to surround yourself with the expert in the different areas. Who's on your team? Years ago, I told people, if you want to build a board, you need to have spiritual people. But you need to have wise people. You don't want someone to just pray till morning, but have no understanding of the field in which we are. No relevancy. The relevancy is only in the spirit. It has not been converted in the earth. It has to be converted. If it's not converted to bear fruit in the earth, we keep you in the stream of prayer. But in the stream of this one, we want prayer and... <laughs> it's not about if I like you, I don't like you. If you like me, I don't like you. If you like this person, don't like. Where we are today, it has nothing to do with liking. Am I speaking to you? When I walk in the plane, I don't care if the pilot just beat up his wife at home. I really don't care. What I care about is this guy is an expert to be able to lend me safely. I, I cease to be a pastor. I'm not a pastor in the plane. I don't care. But even if you pray in tongues till morning and you're so holy ghosted and you have no diploma to fly this thing, guess what? God loves you, you are spiritual, you are powerful, but hang going into this plane. Because prayer will not lend this plane. It is skills and strength of your asset that will lend this plane. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't get fooled for a minute by thinking because you are a Christian, you should know everything. Prayer does not answer all things. No, uh, the religious people, I just shock you right now. <laughs> Look at Africa in our countries. Yeah. Who can pray more than African in Africa? Yeah. Very few. But yet poverty is eating us up. Yeah. But some of these Western countries, prayer is a mystery for them. But they have taken the asset God gave them. Build strength. One day my wife said, my dad said, the people who came to Canada, they are really strong. Because my dad thinks that Canada was supposed to be a land for the bears. But the people were so strong. They tear down this and move this and move that. Look at this beautiful country. Look at this beautiful country. Because somebody dare to swim in a new stream. They dare to go in places where others refuse to go because they want something easy. Don't go for the easy. Build your strengths and conquer everything God has set before you. No matter how difficult it is, there is an asset, there is a gift in you that can rise up to respond and to challenge every opposition of your life. I want to challenge you lastly. Who are you working with? Who is on your team? Are they just emotional? Or you just love one another? You don't even know your banker. But you trust him to run your money. It's not based on emotion and liking. You look at the fruits. I want to associate with people that when I'm streaming in the vision, I'm excelling in the asset God gave me more than my peers.
But I know this one, I can do it. But I have somebody who can do it. So I empower the person and release them to do it. I can breed the antelope, but I can cook. Do you have a cook in your team? Let's bow our heads. This one, I want it to be personal. This message is to challenge you and I. That change is not your enemy. This message is to encourage you and to uplift you. No matter how hard it's been. No matter how tough it has been. No matter how weak you have felt. Even sometime in disarray. Confused. Discouraged. In the place of abandonment. You're wondering how this situation will change. You have taken an account of the size and the weight, the resources that will be required, and how many years. And in some cases, you just have embraced the defeat. Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? Oh, my heart ache. How many times we have missed it? Because of lack of understanding. How many times we have let our emotion outrun the wisdom of God? How many times we've been blinded of the needs and opportunities of the future? How many times we have sold our future to possess the present? Ma'ak ek. How many times we've signed the wrong contracts? How many times we partook in the wrong associations? Putting our trust in the wrong vessels. How many times we have run away and embraced lighter assignments, weaker assignments, smaller visions, where we could feel more in control. In this dichotomy of being wise in the present, but yet expressing faith for the future. Holy Spirit, begin to sort out everything in our hearts. Begin to sort it out. Begin to remove the difficulties of understanding. The mingling, the maze. Move us out of the maze. Rebuild us to believe again. Convict our heart that is not late. That this message is relevant for this season. For a man and a woman who do not fear change. But embrace change to secure the opportunities of the future. Today we take a decision. That will not be strangers to our future. That will not compromise today to affect negatively the days to come. You are calling us for realignment. You are calling us for recalibration. You are calling us to reassess certain values 
in our lives and values in our family lives and values in our relationship, values in our work ethics. You are calling us for a re-examination so we can be redefined to secure an heritage for our children and great-grandchildren. Today we come out of the waters of Esau. Today we come out of the streams of the profane, of the lazy, of the blinded. We come out of the streams of the one who have no sight for the future. Father, forgive us where we have missed the mark, where we have compromised our values, where we have compromised our hearts to embrace what was flashy for the day, selling what could have carried us for years. We just don't live for our lives anymore. Today we choose to stream in a new river under a new anointing of grace and favor that Jacob's righteousness and Jacob's skills and understanding of the future, what you have invested in this man, oh, Shandorobosa. You love Jacob so much that you embrace the platform of Jacob for yourself. You embrace his platform to release your own nation. You didn't choose Moses, even though he saw you face to face, the prophet of great intercession and anointing. You do not choose to name your nation after the name of Moses. You do not choose to name your nation after the name of Abraham, the father of faith. You didn't choose to name your nation after Elijah, the prophet of fire. You did not choose to name your nation after the name and the grace of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, the man of great compassion. But when it was time to birth your nation, you pass all the other streams, you pass all the platform and the different flows, great as they were, but it was a pleasure for you. It was the delight in your heart to choose Jacob to birth in this platform of great prophetic flow that carries strength and authority to bring forth Israel, your holy nation. Father, we are here before you. Transfer us. Transfer us. He's not condemning you. But God said it's time to shift. A paradigm sh shift. In other words, a major violent shift where it is causing you and I to redefine. That's mean there are certain things you will do different than you used to do. And maybe, probably many people will not comprehend or understand you. But you will operate from a new platform that embraces change. Father, I thank you for insight. A Jacob insight. A breeding insight. I give you thanks. Aiden for this body. In the months coming. Release wisdoms. On the associations. The individuals. The skillful one. Reveal new assets that we never knew. Let we manifest so you can draw glory. I bless you in Jesus' name.
Somebody say amen. Can we stand up and give a clap offering to the Lord this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, my heart is so full and so saturated. This morning, I will just ask you quietly, hug one another, and let this word continue to ponder within us. Let change touch every area of your life, spiritual, relationship, job, projects, business, whatever, education, let it touch. Sit down and take an inventory of your life. Break free from the routine without crying, without tears. Decide a new season and times have changed for me. I can't keep doing the same thing. And I'm believing it's my time to rise up to higher heights and fulfill the call of God upon my life. I want you to go with that. It's a time to redefine. I told you in the beginning of the year, this year, we have to do what we have not done. This year needs to be radical. Radical. It's not only in this year you can cut off something and you don't feel bad. Because God will ask us for an account. And this message, we become responsible for the word that we just hear. Some ministry that are dormant in you. For me, it was God gifts, gifts, abilities, my assets. I want to see them rise and I will cultivate them if you reveal them to me. God won't give you a forest. He'll give you seed. So when he reveal you a gift, you've got to practice it and work it out until you become a master with it. You're a master in which thing you practice. You work it out. And cut off a lot of stuff and focus on what will take you to the next. So what next? It is your next. What will take you to your next? That's what you need to engage in. What type of work will take you to your next? What type of investment will take you to your next? What type of relationship will take you to your next? What do you need to cut off? What do you need to embrace? Where you need to put your priorities now? If I take a newspaper right now and give you each person a newspaper, I will understand what is engaging your priority because of what you're going to go to. For some people, it's going to be the sport page. They will jump everything and just go to the sport page. Some people will be the community. They will look where the community. They, they don't even know about the other stuff. For some people, it's the bursary and the stocks market in New York. They will go right away to the page. Some people, it is the, the lady of the sun. You know, they always put this lady there half naked. Some people can't wait to see who's the next beauty now. That's what next for them. So where your priority are engaged, that's where you will gain mastery. And for us as a body, we want to cultivate strength. So as you are part of this church, when you cultivate strength, the body profit of your strength. And we become stronger. So what you are about to go do today is not just for you. It is for you and the people you associate with. And that includes also your church. We want to take an assessment of the strength each person among you carries. Do you understand? Even if we are to interview three, four hundred people, we'll do it. It will be a lot of work, but it will be done. IBM has 7,000 employees. Nobody is an employee there without an interview. So we are still a small group here. But not only church. What about your family, your children, and so on? 
I was asking God, God, if you can take the way I feel this thing and put it in every heart. Because like I just get born again again. I feel another beginning for me. Mm. I want to sit down and reassert everything about cross point, about our lives, about our relationship, about our children life. I, I want to sit down. Even if nothing is broken, I still want to sit down because change need to be continual. And I don't want to justify something because that's what I like or, or it was my idea. And, and why do you want to change this more my idea? Right? Do you understand? Let it go. It, it's great. It's powerful. But let it go. We, we want now a platform that will take us to what's next. You want a platform that will take your family to what next? You want a platform that will take the church to what next? You want a platform that will take each individual to what next? I need to build a platform that will take you to what is my next. If I don't put it down, we'll just pray till morning, and then we lack wisdom. We don't understand systems. And then we are frustrated. And the world is out running us on every corner, and we are just here in church. Hallelujah. Hold your hands. And let me bless you. And then you can go hug somebody. And we leave today quietly. It's okay. We can talk to one another. But don't let anybody take it away from you. Don't let somebody repreach this message to you. Go with what you know you get. Yeah. And go right away. Don't go laugh it out there somewhere. Don't go rub it on somewhere there where you lose it. You got to grab this thing. Because when God gives this, it's because he want to take us to our next. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release grace upon each person, those who are watching online and those who are here in the house of the saints, in the house of God. Father, grace to empower us to fulfill this word. Grace to launch us in the new stream, the stream of Jacob, the man that from whom you birth your nation. Grace to revolutionize our life. Grace to revolutionize our communities. Grace to enhance our assets manifest them, displaying strength and might to actualize every dream and every promise in our life. Grace, grace, grace unto them. Grace unto them. Grace unto them and grace unto them in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want you to hug 10 people today. May the Lord bless you richly and we'll see you Wednesday, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday.